Hi everyone, in this video we would like to introduce a drug called midazolam. We will cover some of the general information, background, synthesis and side effects. Midazolam is a midazole benzodiazepine derivative commonly used for treating status epilepticus and febrile convulsions. Epilepsy is a condition that affects the brain and causes frequent seizures. It is also used for several things such as sedation of patients in intensive and palliative care, in dentistry and as a pre-anesthetic medication. This is due to it being an ultra-short acting hypnotic sedative with anxiolytic and amnestic properties, but it is rarely used due to its bad analgesic effect. The short duration and cardiorespiratory stability also make it useful in poor risk elderly and cardiac patients. Midazolam is also used as the first drug in the free drug protocol for lethal injection in seven states in the US. The main part of the drug molecule is the 1,4 benzodiazepine ring, which is a benzene ring fused to a heterocyclic 7 membered ring. The ring is also fused to a midazole ring, which, unlike other heterocycles in other benzodiazepines, is relatively basic. This makes it one of the few benzodiazepines that is highly water-soluble at pH lower than 4 and highly lipid-soluble at pH higher than 4. This can be explained by the formation of water-soluble salts of acids. From these salts, purely aqueous injectable solutions with a pH of around 3.5 can be prepared. At this pH, an acid-catalyzed opening of the diazepine ring assists water solubility but renders the compound inactive. However, the diazepine ring completely reforms to the active form upon intravenous injection. The first benzodiazepine, chlordiapoxide, was accidentally discovered by Dr. Sternbach and Dr. Reeder in 1930. In 1960, Rush then successfully marketed chlordiapoxide as Librium. After that, many benzodiazepine 2 own compounds were produced with the loss of the N-methyl group and oxidation at carbon-2. Further studies showed that the N-oxide group was unnecessary. This led to the development of diazepam, which is more potent and easier to synthesize. Roche marketed it as Valium in 1963, and it became extremely popular. Novel developments in benzodiazepine chemistry have led to the synthesis of midazolam through introducing a fluorine and an amidazole ring. This was first discovered by Walter and Fryer at Hoffman La Roche. A more recent synthesis of midazolam begins with the start compound containing fluorine, rather than substituting it in during the process. Firstly, the start compound is added to an ortho ester, along with a catalyst. The resulting reaction mixture is heated to 60 degrees, producing the next compound. This compound is then dissolved in methanol and cooled to 0 degrees. This mixture is then reacted with hydroxyamine, which is acidified instead, giving another intermediate. This is then changed to the next compound in the process by addition of lithium amide and nitromethane in dimethylformamide. The new intermediate is hydrogenated using hydrogen gas with the presence of a nickel catalyst, reducing the nitro group to an amine. This primary amine was then reacted, giving the penultimate compound in a crystalline form. This is then converted to the final product midazolam by an oxidation process which uses a catalyst in the presence of molecular sieves at the temperature of 30 degrees. Gamma aminobutyric acid, GABA, is a major inhibitory neurotransmitter in the CNS, acting on GABA receptors. There are two classes of GABA receptors, GABA-A and GABA-B, but as midazolam acts on GABA-A, this is what we will focus on. In normal function, GABA binds to the beta-alpha subunits on the extracellular interface of the GABA-A receptor, a pentameric ligand-gated chloride ion channel. The activated receptor allows an influx of chloride ions, raising thresholds making it less likely for an action potential to be generated. This results in a relaxing effect. When administered, midazolam crosses the blood-brain barrier into the brain via transmembrane diffusion. Midazolam then binds to a specific allosteric site on the alpha-1 gamma-2 subunits of the GABA-A receptor, acting as a positive allosteric modulator. This means that a smaller concentration of GABA is needed to bind to elicit the effect. 
Between the alpha-1 and gamma-2 subunits, midazolam forms bonds with mostly amino acid residues of the alpha-1 subunit. There are four pi pi stacking interactions with the residues from the alpha-1 subunit. These are histidine-101, tyrosine-159, 209 and 206. There are also three hydrogen bonding interactions with the alpha-1 subunit with residues tyrosine-206 and serine-204 and 205. There are only two pi pi stacking interactions between midazolam and their gamma-2 subunit with the residues tyrosine-58 and phenylalanine-77. The clearance of midazolam is greatly affected by the first pass metabolism. Midazolam is rapidly metabolized by cytochrome P450, 3A4 and 3A5 in the liver to yield 1-hydroxy, 4-hydroxy and eventually 1,4-dihydroxy metabolites. Although the metabolites are still active to a certain extent, these metabolites and the fusimidazole ring give rise to the rapid glucuronidation by UGT1A4, 2B4 and 2B7. These conjugates are then readily eliminated by glomerular filtration and tubular secretion. This is the reason for the short 3-hour half-life of this drug. The structure activity relationship of midazolam is mainly affected by the features of the 1,4-benzodiazepine ring, whose structure itself is key for the drug activity. At the seventh position, the chlorine plays an important role as electron withdrawing groups generally enhance the activity of benzodiazepines. Substitutions at the other positions of the fused benzene ring were shown to be of no additional benefit. The cyclic imine of the seven member tetracycle is essential for the biological activity. The fused imidazole ring, similarly to other five membered heterocyclic rings, improves the activity but also greatly affects the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. This double bond is proved to be key for the drug activity. The hydroxylation at position 3 leads to an increase in activity. This is relevant for the activity of midazolam's metabolites. The group of the utmost importance is the phenyl group located at the fifth position. The activity is further increased by the electron withdrawing fluorine at the ortho position. However, meta and para positions must be left unmodified. There are a few serious side effects associated with midazolam. However, some common side effects of midazolam include a decreased level of consciousness, vomiting, and unwanted drowsiness and fatigue which can all have a negative effect on daily life. More serious side effects include difficulties in breathing and swallowing. The most serious side effects children can receive from taking midazolam include decreased oxygen saturation, apnea and hypotension. Depending on the method of administration, there are some differences in the possible side effects. For example, if using a nose spray, irritation of the eye, throat and nasal passage may occur. Midazolam can be administered through the buccal, intranasal, intravenous, oral, intraosseous, intramuscular, subcutaneous, sublingual and rectal routes, but we are going to focus only on the most commonly used. They all have varying onset of action and peak times, but all have a lasting duration of 2 to 6 hours. This determines which routes are used to treat patients suffering from different conditions. Buccal administration is where a solution of midazolam hydrochloride is applied to the side of the gums and cheeks of the mouth, which allows direct absorption into the bloodstream. It has an onset of action time of 10 minutes and peaked after 1 hour. It is typically used to treat children as it's easy to administer and less invasive. Limitations are that the patient may swallow the medicine, causing choking. Intranasal administration is when a midazolam solution is sprayed up the patient's nostril and is absorbed into the bloodstream through the capillaries. It has an onset of action of 10 minutes and peaks after 1 hour. It is used in both paediatric and adult patients. Advantages are that it's non-invasive and has a higher bioavailability than the oral route due to the avoidance of the first pass effect. Intravenous administration is the most common way of administering midazolam. It has a rapid onset of action of 1 minute 
and heats after 5 minutes. There is a high bioavailability as injection directly into the blood avoids systemic circulation. Puncturing of the skin sometimes causes the collapse of the vein. As a result, this route is not commonly used for paediatric patients as there is a higher risk this may occur. So, in this video, we have mentioned what midazolam is used to treat and have explained how midazolam binds to the alpha-gamma subunits on the GABA-A receptor. We have also looked at the structure of midazolam, which is a 1,4-benzodiazepine with a fused imidazole ring that gives it special pharmacodynamic and pharmacokinetic properties. We discussed the most common routes of administration and the reasons behind their use, the numerous side effects and the synthesis route. Thanks for watching!